Martin Popoff here. Welcome back again to another episode of The Contrarians. Uh, we've got uh, an old classic standby guest uh, who we've had many times before, Tim Derling, uh, with us. We're going to be talking about, yes, um, you know, Marco and I have discussed how uh, we've done episodes, our regular episodes, where we have somebody who has a contrarian choice for a favorite album by a band. Um you know, in the in the early days, we thought, OK, we're going to do this once. We're going to do it for, you know, uh, you know, one one participant is going to do this band and then we're not going to do the band again. We did Yes Before as a regular and it was me on the hot seat and I picked Going for the One as my favorite Yes album. But then Marco and I decided, well, let's open it up to other people and find out what their uh, favorites are as well. And uh, and a little bit of a twist to this one. We've we've got Tim who's going to going to be talking about yes uh, drama. I guess I'll let the cat out of the bag. But the interesting thing is, I'm about ready to agree with Tim on this one um, and change my mind. I think drama is probably my favorite yes album too. But without going into that uh, anymore, so um, just just uh, there we go. Just a little bit of a background. I've got I've got my uh, my old vinyl copy of the of the thing here as well. Um, so yeah, this is this is the album after that you know period that uh, going for the one people really liked going for the one. There you go, beautiful updated Roger Dean artwork on that. Um, so they had going for the one in '77. They had Tormato. There you go, the the gatefold. Um, they had Tormato in '78, which is a bit of a contentious album. It's got kind of screechy high end production. People didn't really like that about it, but it also did out did well out there as well. I believe it went platinum. And so then they're back with uh, Drama in 1980. And uh, and the interesting thing here is you've got Trevor Horn on vocals and Jeff Downs on keyboards. So uh, you know a dramatic thing happened here uh, that you don't have John Anderson singing anymore. That's the most important the the most important thing about this record. Um but yeah, it's uh, it's uh, well we'll we'll get into how well regarded it is later, but uh, I'm going to turn it over to Tim uh who can tell us now um you know perhaps why uh this is his favorite Yes album. Thanks, Martin. Yeah, um, yeah. So the regular Contrarians episode saw Martin arguing for going for the one, a great album. Uh, no arguments there. It's actually one of my favorite episodes of the Contrarians because Marco starts coming at Martin with Bible verses that sound like John Anderson lyrics. So it's like pick <laughs> which one is which. Uh, and uh, Martin and I did another episode arguing for the worst album, That's where right. I put forth that Union uh, was my least favorite. Yes, album, and I, I still stand by that. Uh, but yeah, drama is, um, you know, when I got into Yes and I was listening to these albums, I know it's the album that you're quote unquote not supposed to like because it was the first one where, with John Anderson uh, not there and, you know, not being there at the time or not being, you know, listening at the time. By this, by the time I got into Yes, they'd already been through two or three lead singers. It had been Watt David, they've had John Davison. And so this was just another fork in the road. But this is a really, I find this is a really user-friendly Yes album. I've got the, uh, the US 8 track here. And tellingly, yeah. there's a little, I'm guessing this was a markdown because this is the way it came to me. I bought it used. I'm guessing this was a yeah. in the delete bins. I've also got a really old uh, Canadian cassette of it. Hmm. Uh, and yeah, I, Roger Dean artwork is back. Uh, first time Roger Dean artwork had been on a Yes album since the compilation yesterday's. Uh, you know, the going for the one Tormato, that late seventies era, there was hypnosis artwork, which had a totally different feel to it. So they also brought back Eddie offered, uh, on the production for this one. Production is way, 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 way better. And the songs, I think the songs are just extremely strong. It's, um, it's pretty heavy for yes. And, and the reason I say it's a user-friendly album is that, you know, okay. Yeah. Uh, Close to the Edge, generally considered the greatest prog album of all time. Fragile is another highly regarded album, a very successful album. But to a new fan who maybe has heard Roundabout, maybe has heard Owner of a Lonely Heart, they want to get back into the old yes. You plop them right in the middle of, of going for the one or any of these albums where there's no drums, uh, no guitar, it's just John Anderson pontificating on whatever. And, you know, a casual listener is probably going to say, what is this? I thought this was a rock band, you know, to, to, you know, as sanctimonious as that might sound, you really don't get much of that on drum. It's a pretty driving forceful album all the way through, except maybe white car, which is a very, very brief song, but 
man, Machine Messiah, that's got that doomy riff at the beginning of it. Uh, it just, you know, it's got the the guitar, the da 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 Like it just, it it comes on strong, and it basically it's a strong album all the way through. Um, you know, White Car. I've always been kind of confused about that. I, I wondered if they intended on making a fuller song out of that. It's a minute and twenty one, not very long. Does it really happen? One of my favorites. Uh, not just on this album, one of my favorite Yes songs. It's got such a cool groove to it. Um, Into the Lens is interesting, also known as I Am a Camera. It's been recorded by, I mean, the Buggles themselves, you know, uh, Trevor Horn, Jeff Downs did a version of that. Oddly enough, Kim Carnes uh, recorded a version of this sometime in the 80s. Run Through the Lights, a cool song, but Tempest Fugit. I, so Tempest Fugit is the one song from this album that I knew prior to getting into Yes and prior to listening to this album, because many, many years ago, um, growing up in Canada, watching much music, they would have a spotlight and a spotlight would be a daily program where they'd play however many videos, a half hour program on, on a particular artist. And uh, this was, I think, early 88. And there was a Yes spotlight. And at the time, all I knew was the 90125 big generator stuff. So I, I remember thinking, one of the things I liked about these spotlights was that they'd play older videos that you didn't normally see. And the first video they played was Tempest Fugit. Now, not knowing anything about the band, didn't occur to me it was a different singer. He sounds an awful lot like John Anderson on here. I just loved the song. It had that, uh, it had a little bit of that reggae ska thing, but mostly it had really heavy guitar, really driving bass line from Chris Squire and great drums and great passages in it it's always been a favorite of mine and i remember when i said you know i'm going to start listening to yes i'm like okay good i get to i get to hear tempest fugit again and so i i found this it's actually quite an old cd of of uh drum the drum album with this warner brothers thing on it's an old canadian cd and i just grew to really like this album and i remember thinking i know this is not generally considered to be the best yes album but it's my favorite have once i've listened to them all listened to them all again i kept going back to drama i just i don't think there's a weak moment on it and yeah i stand by it it's it's uh it's my favorite probably always will be yeah i, I remember as a kid so i would have been 17 when this came out and i i vaguely remember thinking is this a is this a weird situation where uh you know looking at it uh i thought is this one of those situations where John Anderson actually sung the whole thing, but they put the new guy's picture and name in, in the album, you know, as, as sort of a slate of hand thing. Be, and I'm, I'm not positive that, that I felt that way, but I do also remember it taking a, a little bit of time for me to realize it wasn't John Anderson. Maybe I didn't look at the liner notes right away or whatever, but that's, that's the cool thing about this. It really sounds like, like John Anderson. And, and it reminds me of, of, you know, when the drummer from Genesis takes over from Peter Gabriel and, and lo and behold, he has a voice that's a little bit like Peter Gabriel's, which are two very weird voices. Yeah. Um, Phil and Peter. And yet there's, there's some commonality there. So, so I thought that was great. Um, but unfortunately, this turned into a situation like um, like um, Tommy Bolin in Deep Purple, where the new guy wasn't quite accepted. And yeah. uh, and, you know, this thing this thing wasn't to be. And, and there were there were a lot of complaints at the time when when the band goes out uh, on tour uh, for this album. But I, I thought the album was was really good. So, yeah, I just wanted to. Um, maybe read a passage this is so i've got these two yes hardcover books this is a visual biography one 68 to 81 this and then the the other one goes up to the present day so this is the one that has drama in it and uh you know i remember fondly backstage at massey hall talking to jeff jeff downs about this album um and he says in here a lot of people like drama it showed that yes we're prepared to access and push new boundaries from my standpoint a piece like machine messiah is a worthy contender to sit along with some of the best yes stuff it has the hallmarks of a yes piece uh, as does the whole album which doesn't really sound like anybody else it sounds very disciplined as a record but actually we were all over the place in terms of recording it's true it sounds very disciplined and when you said heaviness um you know the heaviness is more like a like an energetic upbeatness and a tightness to the rhythm section and you know some fairly up-tempo songs and passages on it um let's see it's uh, uh 
I mean, that's why the album uh, named Drama came up because the amalgamation of the other three guys and me and Trevor was not holding great reverence in some corners, certainly with the diehard Yes fans. But I think once they got to hear the album and over time people have warmed to it, it was uh, put together with a lot of rehearsing and care. Eddie Offord came for some of it and then he left and we had to finish it off on our own. It ended up a kind of a group produced album. Eddie Offer did the backing tracks, but everything else was done as a group production. That's where it usually can sound absolutely awful, where the band are all hanging over the faders, but it actually does stand up and sounds pretty powerful and punchy still. That's absolutely right. So it has its kind of ups and downs, but if you look at it in the cold light of day, it's a solid album. So that's what Jeff said in that book. Um, It's very well recorded. Yeah, absolutely. And and like you say, it's super catchy and perky. Um, you know, into the lens I always lined up with uh with the camera eye from uh from moving pictures, yeah. you know, yeah. it's kind of, you know, the 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 epic about that stuff. In terms of rankings out there in the world, Ultimate Classic Rock had its sixth um after Relayer going for the one, the Yes album Fragile Close to the Edge. So those are all your usual suspects there. Not so much Relayer, I don't think, but uh going for the one certainly ranks high. I, I took out my Going for the one as a, you know, to, to show in, in uh, solidarity with that and then with in solidarity with what you said very accurately close to the edge is often called the greatest prog album of all time. And and in a certain sense, my my head tells me that's the best one. But my heart tells me I'm, I'm with you on this one now, too. I, I find drama um, absolutely the, the most uh, listenable, exciting, cheerful Um uh, of of all of them um i love the song lengths on them not too long not too short kind of thing um but yeah it's kind of cool three songs on each side um classic rock history gave it a um uh, they just did a top 10 and drama didn't even make it prog sphere had it 14th uh, out of a, out of um I, i'm not sure how many they had on here but they, these these things vary up and down best ever uh, albums had it 10th chaos spin had it 7th out of 23 so that's pretty high um, let's see, what did they say? The sound was more muscular. The songs are more accessible. The overall album was a joy. I, I like that as well. It, it definitely was a joy. Um, let's see, uh, aphoristic album reviews, uh, in a 68 to 87 time frame, had it eighth. So that's not so hot either. Um, and, and in terms of tour statistics, I mean, this album has, has been played a fair bit over time. Yes. is a little bit like rush in that, um, they were they were really good at eventually exploring their entire catalog pretty well so they had tempest fugit was the 18th most played uh yes song of all time at 449 times machine messiah was played uh 26th most 299 times they apparently played that live doesn't really happen um uh once uh, 176 times that one actually is a um that that's a carryover from the the tornado sessions um in terms of like an like an old song that got reworked uh i i think uh, on the on the uh, expanded reissue it's called everybody's song um but yeah you we we yeah. have that well, with with john anderson singing yeah. which is kind of neat um and then uh, into the lens 54th played 130 times white car 67th played 92 times so this album got got played a fair bit um yeah and you know i just love that artwork i mean i i just love this whole you know uh roger dean updating his his look uh a little bit for this and beautiful beautiful you know stuff happening yeah, i like i like the logo in the in the silver like or silver blue yeah. like that now shame about this gatefold like i have what's up with that <laughs> yeah that's a, that's a weird picture you're yeah. right it's it's blurry um yeah yeah, it's kind of made to look a little modern. Yeah, they got their hands up in the air. You're right. I never really thought about it. That's a pretty crappy picture of the band, isn't it? Um, I've got the 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 2004 bonus uh, or expanded version, and there's a lot of songs on here. So there's there's uh, single versions yeah. of Into the Lens, Run Through the Light. Uh, have we really got to go through this? Song number mm-hmm. four, Satellite, Tempest Fugit Tracking Sessions, which is kind of cool because yeah. you can hear the lyrics weren't complete. Yeah, that's uh, funny. At that yeah, point, yeah. you know, Trevor went da 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 White Car, uh, Dancing Through the Light, which I think eventually became Run Through the Light, Golden Age, In the Tower, Friend of a Friend. See, yeah, this album yeah. was originally supposed to be uh, recorded in, I think, Paris in 79 with wakeman and anderson and roy thomas baker but it fell apart and i'm you know i I think i'm kind of glad it did because we might have gotten a continuation of like i like going for the one a lot i actually like tormato quite a lot 
But I think it would have been too much of that sing-songy, no drums, you know, just dead quiet. Yes. And muscular is a good way to describe that review said muscular. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's not out and out metal, but the drums are recorded a little bit more loud than, than typically. And Steve Howe's, it's more electric than acoustic on this album. It doesn't have his normal tone. And um, I, I think it's, you know, it's really significant that it was their first album of the eighties too, because to me, you know, even though when I say it's a user-friendly album, I, I believe that's true to the average listener, someone who just grew up in the eighties listening to music, obviously 90125 is the one to say, well, okay, it's nothing too weird on here. You listen to this and maybe, you know, this still has the prog to it. And um, especially when you have Trevor Horn and Chris Squire singing together, and I guess Steve Howe on the low parts, it just sounds like yes. Whereas 90125, you could say, well, it sound, it's definitely from the 80s, but I can't quite place who it is. Um, this sounds like a yes album. Yeah. So, and, you know, like, I, I stand by it, you know. Maybe not the expanded edition, because there's an awful lot of fluff on there, but just that, the, that original six-song album, especially, you know, like me, someone who was into Rush first, this is a good gateway album. Uh, not that it sounds like Rush. I just, like I said, it doesn't have the John Anderson tiptoeing through the valley type of thing on it. Uh, as you say, the religious culty type of stuff, which I enjoy that in its place. But man, for this album to get ranked at number 12, number 14, like you were saying, let us not forget that, you know, a lot of people will say, well, for an album that John Anderson's not on, I guess it's okay. Let us not forget John Anderson sang on Union. <laughs> he sang on on Tales from Topographic. Like not everything he touched turned to gold, right? Yeah. Um, and yes, he is the yes vocalist. That's true. But uh, Trevor Horn did such a great job on here. I've also heard that live he wasn't that great. He His range didn't go as high as John Anderson, which you would need for doing the older material. But tonally, he's right there. And for what he does in this album, he sounded great. It's also... I think the only example I can think of where somebody went from being a band's lead singer to their producer. Yeah. That was a cool turn of events. That's that came later, of course, but yeah. no, I stand by this album. There's nothing wrong with fragile close to the edge or going for the one, but this is my favorite. I think this one needs, you know, for people that dismiss it as being, you know, subpar. Yes. Because John Anderson's not on it. It's yes through and through. It just, it doesn't sound like anyone else. It couldn't be anyone else. Yeah. Yeah. And I love your idea about it being a gateway album, because to me, it does sound like like a cross between going for the one and nine oh one two five. Yeah. Five. See there. I did it again every single time. Right. Oh, I always I always do that. But and one other thing I wanted to mention is um, on on Run to the Light, um, you know, you get you get this thing out of Trevor where he's he has that sort of uh, um sting police vocal sort of sound right yes. so, so he has he has and then and then you can play a little exercise in your head and go to the other songs and say well that sounds a little bit like sting as well so so his voice yeah it's he he, he could be a stand-in for sting uh, wow too. i never thought of that but but you're having uh, my love thing is yeah <laughs> Yeah, wow. Totally sounds like the cool. police, right? So yeah. uh so yeah, it's, and that would have been funny. very much in the forefront of popular rock music at yeah, the time too. Yeah. And I like your comparison with Rush here as well because because this does seem like it's um it's just well that one review I said well no, it was Jeff Downs who said discipline, right? So it yeah. sounds a lot like permanent waves uh into moving pictures into yeah. signals. You just get this this tightness, there's prog, but there's great strength of song here as well. So uh so there you have it guys. So um so yes, drama. Um, like I say, I've come away to uh, I've I've come around to Tim's way of thinking here as well. I'm going to officially rescind my uh, my going for the one episode in a way. Uh, we're not going to take it down, but uh, but I'm I'm now uh, I'm now on board with uh, you know it's it's all it's a real tight sort of race for uh, for gold, silver, and bronze between drama going for the one and close to the edge for me. Uh, let us know what you guys think in the comments below. Tim, of course, you could find on Tim's vinyl confession. Um, I don't know. Is the is the eight track book still available? What's the latest no, on the eight track book? No, that, long that, gone. That's, wow, that's you guys long, have a rarity out there. You've got a yeah, beautiful, that's beautiful long book. sold out. Thanks, Anybody thanks who's ever that gotten that, it. yeah, that he did an awesome book on the history of eight tracks. But yeah, Tim, Tim's vinyl confessions for Tim and um, 
And yeah, let us know in the comments below, uh, you know, what your favorite Yes albums are. Don't forget to subscribe. We've got a Patreon situation as well. Marco's done a great job in keeping that up. And we've got panels. If you join Patreon, you can be on our panels, which has really taken off. That's a thing we do a lot of. Um, so there you go for, for Tim and myself. Um, go listen to some Yes.